What's up? My name is Kofi and today's video is about wing tuning. Since the launch of the Chupito, many new wing pilots came into the game. So I thought about what a great opportunity to knock out an educational video about wing tuning. In general, um, physics have more influence on a flying wing versus uh, a quadcopter. That's why so many quad pilots had bad experiences with these types of aircrafts in the past. Oh! Oh! Jeez. So a good mechanical setup is the foundation for the flight controller to control the plane in autonomous and stabilized modes. That's why we get the manual mode dialed in first, so the plane flies beautiful in every return to home situation. Let's get to these crucial steps, right? Step one, servo geometry. This is basically the best servo geometry for most of the wings. This grants the most pitch resolution you can get. The goal with the servo geometry on the flying wing is to have the most deflection on the pitch axis the plane can handle without stalling, right? Get it on the servo side as low as you can, flush with the, with the wings. And on the elevon side, get it as high as you can. Me personally, I installed a custom um, elevon horn for the Chupito, that way I have more resolution. How do I tune pitch? So basically, you have to tune pitch in manual mode and acro mode. In manual mode, you fly at 50% throttle, right? And you pull full elevator, full pitch, and you see how the plane behaves. If the plane has too much deflection on, on pitch, that means the plane will stall out. It eventually rolls out to the left or to the right, whatever. You just feel that you cannot complete a full smooth loop. Do it at 50% throttle and then pull back gently. If you have too much throw, you have to reduce the throw, right? So if the plane stalls while looping, you have to reduce the throw. This mechanical setup already provides the highest res resolution you can have. So in order to reduce the throw, we do that in software. I show that to you later, right? Now we're in software. I'm using INOV 8.0 on this aircraft. There are three ways in total to tune your rates. First is to go into the tuning tab, go into rates and expo, and here you can see I've tuned down my pitch movement to 77% in total because I can't use any more throw, okay? That would limit my total um, pitch resolution. Just leave roll at 100%, that's my experience with most of the flying wings. Um, another thing is don't use too much expo, okay? 30% is plenty. Second way to tune your rates. Under the outputs tab, you can find the rates um, down here. They're set to 100%, you can maximize them to 125 if you should not have enough deflection with your mechanical setup, okay? Um, a third way to tune your rates is the uh, mixer tab. Here you can see this: the weight should add up to 100%. Um, just leave roll at 60% and pitch at 40 because again, we can't use more um, deflection on pitch than what we have anyway. If you want to tune the acro mode, it's a whole nother thing, okay? In order to tune acro mode, you just have to do the INAV auto tune procedure. I just linked to another video. Actually, it's quite easy. You just put an auto tune mode on one of your switches, and then you have to fly full rates uh, on pitch and roll. And eventually, it sets your feet forward and your rates. That's crucial for the acro mode. Alright, step two is laminating the wings. Laminating the wings basically is like a stiffer suspendo in your car, right? This makes the plane turn tighter, just make it a little bit more locked in because it's less flex overall. It also has, adds durability, right, for those nice bush landings um, or if you should crash because we do crash, right, every now and then. Yeah, the speed is great. Mm -hmm. You got that? Yeah. She. Mm-hmm. Say I can't fly slow. Oh. I think my battery is done again. Okay, yeah, then let's wrap. Oh no, no, no! no. Oh! Sick your spin though. God diggity! Plus it looks cool. Yeah, I love it. It just gives it the shiny look. Um, so how to apply it? I have a little travel iron. You can get it on Amazon for 20 bucks basically where you can set the temperature. Just start with the lowest temperature and then apply it. If you don't want to buy a small pink travel iron to apply, 
the film. You can also just use basic um, packing tape. Just put something around it that makes it stiffer. The foam will hold longer. Step three, CG. So CG is the most important part on the flying wing. If the CG is off, your aircraft will fly like ish. In order to get the CG dialed in, I suggest to put M2 screws in there, right? Because that way you can balance it pretty nice on your fingers and check how the CG is looking. Mine's is a little bit nose heavy. You can see it dips to the nose a little bit. Basically, that's the perfect CG for maiden flights. This gives the most stability, the highest percentage of you getting the plane into the air. But eventually, if you progress and learn how to tune these things, you shift the CG back, right? So to, in order to tune the CG perfectly, I advise to put like CG markings, right? I have two markings for the 1,500 milliampere LiPo and the smaller LiPo. That way my plane behaves the same every time I fly it. I'm not wondering, hey, why is it so tail heavy today? So yeah, that's what you have to do to get it dial in over time, right? So how do I tune the CG? When it comes down to CG tuning, we're talking about millimeters in general. A nose heavy CG means more stability. That means more stability on your axis, basically on every axis, less agility, okay? A nose heavy CG makes sense for mountain flying, long range, where you want the most stability for your onboard footage versus more tail heavy CG. That means more agility, less stability. Your plane will turn tighter, it will roll tighter, um, but eventually it has more yaw waggle and it's not st as stable overall. Another tip I have is the CG markings on a Chupito are nose heavy, okay? Um, I said it that way, but I can tell you, they can, you can even fly it a little, a little tail heavy. This is like the max agility if you like freestyling with it. <laughs> Let me show you what each state means. Right now it's nose heavy. It's in a nose heavy state. You see it slowly dips to the, to the nose, right? Yeah. Now it's leveled out perfectly. Three millimeters difference. Pull that shit to the back. Now we're talking tail heavy. If your plane immediately dips to the back, it won't fly, okay? Don't fly it like that. All right, step four, acro mode versus manual mode. This is a really important one because most people don't know the difference, right? Manual mode means the plane basically flies without a flight controller. It's not stabilizing itself. There is no pit controller involved. That means you have the most feeling when you fly the plane. You fly every, every little roll, every pitch, because the plane won't counteract that um, movement. It makes the most sense to fly freestyle and manual mode and general fun flying because <clears throat> that way you can actually experience the plane. It's like stick shifting versus fucking automatic shifting, right? It's the same thing. For example, if you land, I'll advise to use manual mode. That way you feel the plane stalling. You always have to pull back eventually and you feel how much leverage you still have before the plane stalls. All right, so good manual mode is the foundation for a good flying acro mode, okay? Acro mode is actually almost like the opposite of manual mode. The pit controller stabilizes the plane. The gyro recognizes the, the position of the plane and if it tracks something uncommanded um, like wind input or something like this, it will counteract really, really fast, faster than any pilot could. That's another reason why you use nice digital servos um, with 333 hertz, for example, because you just cut down lots of latency for the acro mode and the pit controller react to outer forces, basically. I use the acro mode for long range flying, um, when I need the stability, for example, for the nice onboard footage, or flying in these stupid conditions, for example. If you wanna fly a small airplane plane in these conditions, you need a nice tuned pit controller. There's one thing that's like bad in acro mode, right? You don't have that much feeling. Actually, you don't have any feeling at all, right? Because the plane will counteract any movement. 
if you come in for a landing, for example, and you have to flare in and you pull pitch back, 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 eventually till you land, you don't pull it back manually, right? The flight controller does it for you. So you don't feel anything pulling back. You just think, oh, I'm perfectly fine because your pitch is in the middle and the plane is already like stalling away, right? So for landings in general, I advise to use manual mode. If you want to feel the plane, you don't want anything acting against it, right? So these are the main difference between manual and acro. Okay. Step five, how to make my wing fly straight. <laughs> yeah. Two things we have to differentiate. Um, it's manual mode and acro mode. So in manual mode, most of the time we use auto trim. Auto trim is the INAV mode. That means after you triggered auto trim, you have to fly at the desired speed where you want that plane to be trimmed in uh, for three seconds. That way the plane saves the, um, the continuous position of the servos and you trim in at that speed, okay? When you switch it off immediately afterwards, you will get your old trim back. I trim all my planes at top speed. That means if I fly slower than top speed, my plane just dips the nose, okay? If you trim your plane in at 50% throttle, it will dip its nose beneath 50% throttle and it will lift the nose if you're higher than 50% throttle. We're only talking about manual mode because again, acro mode always trims your servo for the speed you are in so that the plane flies straight no matter what speed, okay? In order to trim the autonomous um, flight modes, you have to do another thing. Basically, you put your wing um, in the position where it would fly. This is crucial for the angle mode of the wing and return to home. You put the wing in the position where it would fly. Basically, every flying wing has, a, has like a three to five degree up angle. You put it that way plug in INAV and then turn all the degrees of each axis to zero. I'll show that later in the video. Now we back in software, head to the alignment tool. Um, in order to have the flying wing fly straight in autonomous modes like return to home and angle mode, you need to set the correct alignment for the flight controller. So set the wing aside like it would fly. Make sure that um, pitch and roll is level. Add a little bit of pitch up trim. Um, because flying wings don't fly super straight, they have a little bit of up trim. And here, go to the alignment tool, for example. Now I'm um, 2.5 degree off. Now, to get it level, I just put 2.5 degree. Hit save and reboot. And that way you tell the flight controller what level flight is. You see? Yeah, almost. But you get the point, right? But that way you show the wing how it should fly straight. And that way angle mode will fly straight. Step six, pit tuning. Um, pit tuning on a flying wing is not as crucial compared to um, a quad. It's fairly easy actually. Just raise the P-term. P-term is against fast forces like wind for example. Just raise the P-term till the plane oscillates on the pitch axis. For the Chupito, I just put in my um, pits. You can use them if you have fast servos, digital servos, 303 hertz, and this servo geometry, okay? So I-term is against slow force, forces like bad CG, stupid antenna setups. So basically, I tune I-term the following. I just put my wing in 45 degrees angle, raise it to 60% throttle. If it dips the nose, I just put more I-term for pitch axis. And again, the same for roll. If it rolls over the time, either to left or to right. Basically, if it has error over the time, you raise the I term on the specific axes. But don't tune it too much because you will have less feeling on the pitch axis. Only use enough I term so that the plane can go at 45 degrees at 60% throttle. Another thing um, I want to add is the filter tuning for wings, okay? I don't know, know much about filter tuning, but the, the man UAV Tech, he got a video where he explains why, what filters to turn off on INAV. So I'll just put it in the description. Just do what he does. 
there's way too much freaking filtering in INA for a fixed wing, you don't need that much filtering. So if you just lower the filtering in general, the pit controller can react way faster to any outward forces. If you follow these steps, you should have a beautiful If you follow these steps, you should have a beautiful flying aircraft in no time. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Make flying wings great again and yeah, that's it.